Today we're answering viewer questions. We have received a bunch of them, so thank you for that. If you have questions either regarding this live cast today or just the question in general about your role as family caregiver caring for a parent, please enter your questions in the comment box below and uh, we will appreciate that and we will get to your questions. But today, Cindy, what are we going to uh, talk about today? <clears throat> We're going to start out with a question. How do I help a parent who is mentally declining and insists on being independent but continuing to make poor financial choices that are costly? Part one. <clears throat> so how would you address that? There are a lot of there are a lot of issues here, by the way, in that one question. Oh, yes. And it and uh, by the way, if you have, I didn't mention this a minute ago, if you have some friends who are dealing with a declining parent, please share this with them, particularly this question. You know, at the early stages, it is very difficult because um, mom or dad have been handling their business for years. And, you know, a lot of times if you go to them and say, mom or dad, I think you need some help they may say, I think you need some help, you know, go home and leave me alone. And it is tough at the beginning stages because um, yes. they don't want to, uh, this is their sovereignty, their control, their independence, and they don't want to turn that over to you. And it is it is tough. It's, it's easier when it's better. And honestly, it's easier when it's worse, if, especially if they got Alzheimer's or some related dementia and it gets to the point where they don't really realize uh, what's happening. It, it gets easier then, but right in the middle stages or right toward the beginning, it can be tough uh, helping a, a declining parent. So things that we have done in the past or that we've seen families do in the past and this is easier in a small town than in a big town if you live in New York City or somewhere it is it is can be tough but if you personally know a banker if the banker knows a family and knows you and your mom or your dad uh, you can sometimes have a talk with them and they can just help you watch things you know especially if it's a particular big check that comes through, they can help you keep an eye on that. So that would be the uh, most informal uh, thing that could be done. Formally, you can um, it, talk to your mom or dad and uh, you could get a check over a certain amount requires two signatures. Uh, accounts like that can be set up. A joint account, if it's joint, if you're on the account and they're on the account, either one of you can write a check so that doesn't really help anything. Uh, you can get a, get the checks with two signatures, but that that is an issue. Uh, one thing that can be done is just try to control how much is in the checking account. Maybe any excess funds, put it over in a, a money market account or savings account or some account where it's readily accessible, but it just not be in the checking account and have a smaller amount of money in there. So they're that, more extreme that, measures before we get to them. <laughs> and the second account, if there's a larger sum of money, make sure that it would require two signatures to withdraw that so they don't just go around you to that second account and get it. Right. Okay, in this question, we don't know if mom or dad had already signed up a power of attorney giving you the authority to deal with this. And if it was immediate meaning it has already taken effect or if you have to get a letter from a doctor for it to, to take effect if you do have that authority then you go directly to the banker or to the broker and talk <clears throat> to them in in unless you do have a doctor's uh, letter uh, usually uh, a power of attorney in general just general terms is is a, like a permit permission slip where mom or dad is giving you maybe one of the kids permission to act um, on their behalf but that doesn't remove their right from them doesn't strip them of their rights right. they just say if I'm uh, incapacitated usually is what something like this says if I'm incapacitated will you the kid have the power to act for me and then there's sometimes a triggering mechanism to prove that you are incapacitated like a doctor's letter 
but still they have the legal authority to act on their own behalf. And so these things help. It is great if your parents do not have a power of attorney. That's one of the basic documents that uh, when you set up a review with your local elder law or estate planning attorney that you should discuss to see if that would be appropriate for your parents. Uh, and for them, obviously, if they have capacity to, they can, uh, and if you're the senior and watching this, um, you should do this because, you know, if you don't have a power of attorney naming who you want, who is going to make decisions for you if you can't make them for yourself? Well, that's a good, good question. I mean, now that you have capacity, you can say who you want. You can pick. And once you lose capacity, um, you can't pick anymore because you've lost capacity. So now's the time if you if you want to do this. Uh, doesn't mean that you no longer have the uh, the right to handle your business, but it says if you're incapacitated, who you want to do this for you, and uh, that's good news. You get to pick, so you get an element of choice, element of control, and that you're saying who does it. Okay, the second part of the question was, you, you're dealing with a, a parent who is mentally declining and making some poor choices when it comes to finances. The second part of the question was, how do I respectfully do this respectfully without taking away their dignity? I think a lot of that is in how you a approach them about it, um, non-confrontational, do it with respect, tell them you have their best interest at heart, you don't know what the future is going to hold. If you are able to be their caregiver and you are there 24 seven and you are the only person that has to be um, responsible for them and you don't, you don't have to pay other caregivers and you're not getting paid, then it, it may not make a difference. But if they give away huge sums of money and one of the biggest things in our country now is scams that are being perpetrated upon our seniors if, if they give away large sums of money and something happens to you and you can no longer be their caregiver and they have to enter a nursing home or other long-term care facility, then this money that was given away will create a penalty so that they can't receive benefits to pay for their care for a, for a certain period of time. So, you know, you have to weigh, you have to be respectful. In, in everything that you do, but you also have to look at what is in their best interest because you may or may not be here to the end of their life to make certain that they get good care. And if you're not and they have to go into a facility, you need to do something now to make sure that they will be cared for. So in, in power of attorney, so a property power of attorney and a health care power of attorney who makes property or financial decisions for you if you can't, who makes health care decisions for you if you can't. Um, you, sometimes if there is no power of attorney in place and a parent loses capacity, uh, then one of the kids has to pursue a guardianship, which means you go to court and get a court order saying that you have the authority to handle business on behalf of your parents and now you've got a new buddy in your life who's a judge and um, it's better if you've done planning in advance where you don't have to go through that process that's difficult time consuming and expensive and most of that could have been avoided uh, with a good power of attorney and while mom and dad still have capacity and when they choose when they get to say who they want to make decisions for them and not let someone else choose and it could be someone that they didn't want to do it you know the petitions of court down the road and um, but you know in that case mom and dad just forfeited the right to choose they they had the chance they didn't do it and then someone else has to go in. So, but to, as a specific uh, answer to this question, it is tough to do, particularly for mom or dad are declining in the early stages. And it is, it is hard to do uh, respectfully. You just have to give that your best shot. And, um, you know, sometimes uh, uh, in a, like a family meeting type of situation, all the kids could get together 
in uh, like an intervention. <laughs> yeah. Talk to mom or dad, say, hey, you need, we want to help. You know, we really do. We want to help and do it as respectfully as possible and uh, give that your best shot, see how that goes. That's all we got time for. That's all we got time for today. We was going to do two, but we talked too long. We just did one. So, um, anyway, we will do the other one uh, tomorrow. Thank you for your questions. Please, we want your input. Uh, we've gone over a lot of questions, but we're getting low on them here. So, make sure enter your questions or comments in the comment box below. Share this with your friends. Ask them to ask questions. So, we'll have a never-ending supply of questions and comments and uh where we can hopefully give you some information that's useful to you. But thanks for joining us today on this episode of Help Me Help Mama Livecast, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow. Have a good day.